Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today's question is which of the following events result in influenza epidemics and pandemics and if you would take a look at this picture you would see that uh, influenza virus happens not only in humans but in a broad range of the animals and also if you would take a close look you would see that uh, wild birds have uh, most variants of this virus so wild birds considered to be a reservoir of this virus so any variants of this virus uh, happens in wild birds except couple variants uh, that happens or unique only to the bats and also you would see uh, here arrows that goes from birds to humans and pigs and also we need to add one more arrow that we also can get this uh, virus from pigs so when virus mutates uh, within uh, our species this usually cause uh, epidemics but when uh, virus jumps from other animals with uh, which we um, have a contact like uh, domesticated birds that get it from wild birds and pigs uh, in this case we usually get pandemics so epidemic is disease that usually caused uh, damage in certain area uh, which can be limited to country or region or even continent but pandemic is disease that has consequences on the uh, global level when all the countries uh, all the people would be susceptible so this is just different levels spreading whether it is local or global plus of course uh, if uh, the virus cause mild effect on our health we uh, also not uh, tend to call this epidemic but if virus would uh, cause serious uh, problems to our health like uh, what we uh, had a few years ago with H5N1 this is uh, bird or avian flu where almost 50% uh, of the people uh, who got this flu uh, died from uh, this virus so in this case of course we would call this uh, pandemic those uh, we uh, have been able to stop it at the very beginning so not all the countries and not so many people have been affected because this uh, virus the strain of the virus we got only from the birds but uh, not many cases have been registered when humans uh, gave it to other humans so this also helped to stop this pandemia and now uh, let me explain what uh, usually happens uh, when uh, we have uh, antigenic uh, drift so you probably familiar with genetic drift and today we are going to talk about antigenic drift so what is the antigen antigen can be any protein that uh, we can uh, get as uh, infection and our immune system would produce antibodies uh, some antibodies would attach and destroy antigen or some of them can attach and uh, would uh, be a signal for our immune system to destroy this antigen and if you would take a look at this picture you would see the structure of the influenza virus and what is uh, interesting about the structure of this virus that uh, those most of the viruses have um, genomes that is with a single stranded or double stranded uh, can be circular uh, or can be linear in this virus as you see genome is 
uh, fragmented. So we see here eight fragments. Each fragment uh, would code for one protein and two fragments would code for two proteins. So uh, eight uh, fragments would code for ten proteins. Two of these proteins would make uh, surface proteins. One we call neuraminidase, uh, shown here with yellow, yellow color, and another one is uh, hemagglutinin, shown here with red color. And uh, actually, uh, all the names uh, of the virus, uh, whether it is uh, A or B or C, would have a name uh, something like H blank space and N blank space. So we can put uh, different numbers here depending on uh, what the strain it is. So it can be for example H1 and 1 or it can be H2 and 1 or H2 and 2 and so on. So many different combinations are possible and um, during uh, replication of this virus because this is single-stranded RNA virus, which is uh, has negative uh, strand or minus strand uh, during replication, because uh, replication of the uh, RNA is not efficient. Uh, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase make mistake about every ten thousand base pairs, so every during replication of every virus, uh, about one mistake would be uncorrected because this polymerase is not very effective at um, correction of mistakes that it makes. Not effective as, uh, for example, DNA polymerase. And um, so when such mistakes would accumulate, we call this genetic drift. Once again, for example, the sequence would be A, T, C. Sorry, because this is um, RNA virus, so instead of thymine, uh, this virus would have uracil. So A, U, C, G, U, A. So let's take uh, this sequence and uh, during replication uh, this virus may get small changes here. For example, instead of this C, this virus may get G here. And uh, all the rest sequence can be the same, but this may lead to change in um, sequence, uh, protein sequence or amino acid sequence of this antigens. So that's why we call uh, this surface proteins antigens because uh, this is actually what besides of the contact with uh, antibodies. And uh, if proteins here or amino acids, single amino acids would change, that also would cause uh, new variation and this is explains why every year we need new shots and we cannot get one uh, immunization shot say uh, last year and it going to protect us this year because this year we may have another virus that uh, would be slightly different from what we got in the previous year and uh, when uh, time passing say in another year uh, another uh, mistake can be uh, incorporated here. So with the passing of time uh, because this virus replicates in single organism in billions copies and you can imagine that every year about 20% of our population would get this virus. So uh, this virus has a huge potential for uh, mutation and uh, rising of new strains. 
So once again, what I have described here, we call antigenic uh, drift. So this is antigenic drift. So uh, slow, but uh, in the case of this virus, there is a fast accumulation of mistakes. And now let's talk about antigenic shifts. Now I need another picture of the virus. As you remember uh, from my previous explanation, there can be different uh, hosts for this virus. For example, it can be pigs or birds or humans. And in each uh, host, such virus uh, would undergo uh, this antigenic drift and uh, such mistakes would accumulate. And we are specifically interested in only two proteins, uh, which is surface proteins, uh, hemoglutinin and neuraminidase. So over the time, for example, those virus that is present in birds, such uh, mistakes would accumulate and accumulate. The same is true, for example, in those viruses that infect pigs. And over the time, uh, for example, these antigens, uh, hemagglutinin of uh, two different species, would accumulate so much uh, differences that uh, these two uh, proteins uh, would also cause a different response from our immune system. More than that, because uh, these two viruses had different hosts, uh, this virus and the host were co-evolved. So, for example, birds uh, also responded to these changes uh, by changes in immune system and uh, those uh, viruses present in pigs also uh, changed, but uh, immune system of the pigs also accommodated to these changes. So these viruses in both uh, birds and pigs doesn't produce a great effect on their health. But what might happen if uh, each virus, for example, this uh, bird flu virus and this pig virus, influenza virus, both of them are influenza virus, would infect, for example, human. And in this case, uh, what might happen, and once again, when this virus penetrates a human cell, uh, this genome, uh, which is fragmented genome, would penetrate uh, cells uh, nucleus. So let's say this is nucleus. So this is nucleus, and in uh, the first case we would have, say, let me choose red color for each uh, strand of the RNA here, and green color for each single RNA strand of this virus. So uh, both uh, strands of the virus can be present in the nucleus of the host cell. And when uh, this virus would replicate and start to uh, assemble, what might happen, uh, once again, I'm drawing picture out of proportion, uh, just to show you what might happen, uh, that new virus would have, once again, eight uh, strands, but these eight strands would mix. Some would come from uh, swine virus and some would come from the bird virus. And this may give a rise um, to such um, new uh, variants of the virus that would be virulent because we didn't uh, get used to this virus which accumulated uh, these changes for a long period of time in different hosts. And now uh, this virus has uh, antigens that uh, 
never been present before in the virus that infects humans and this I give a name new name for example not H1 and one but say can be H2 and two so uh, usually this might cause uh, pandemics because gradual changes may cause um, local uh, epidemics but such uh, shifts in uh, genome of the virus may cause pandemic because uh, such viruses can be much more virulent and uh, our immune system is not prepared for these new strains and uh, such virus may uh, cause much more harm on the global level. So now we can return to our uh, variants of the answers and as you see answer A gives us a description of uh, antigenic drift which usually cause uh, only uh, epidemics uh, due to gradual accumulation of uh, mistakes in the genome and answer B antigenic shifts or reassortment of genomes of two more different uh, strains of flu usually cause pandemics and also uh, can cause um, epidemics so this is the correct Answer and answer C loss of uh, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase receptors is wrong answer. First of all, because this is not uh, receptors but antigens, and without these antigens, uh, this virus cannot function. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.